If you know about the Pisces sign in the 12 houses in the Navamsa, then you will know where your emotional quotient, your creativity, your fears, some of your ability to be able to use your imagination to better use, where is it coming from? Hello, Namaskar and Adab to all my friends from your friend Astrologer and Guide Irfan. Once more with you from your very own channel, Astro Assurance. We have been doing the series of different planets in the Navamsa and now we are doing the series also of different signs in the different houses in the Navamsa. So we have covered all the signs so far. Today is the last sign of the series which is the Pisces sign in the 12 different houses in the Navamsa. Now we know the Navamsa is very important. It is the finest dissemination of the Lagna chart which is the main chart of your horoscope and because it is the finest dissemination of the chart so the ascendant of the Navamsa becomes very important and because of the ascendant the following signs also become important. So if you know which specific sign is going in which house in the Navamsa it throws a lot of light in how that specific area of your life say the second house income livelihood or the fifth house your creativity, your power, your ability to make changes in your career, gain, children, romance and so on. What energy in your relationship, in your partnership and in your ability to get the finest probabilities. Mind you remember that Lagna chart, the D1 chart is a chart of possibilities but the D9 chart, the Namamsa chart is a chart of probabilities. What is most probable to happen? So diving into which sign goes into which house in the Navamsa will throw light on how that particular house is manifesting itself in the finest dissemination of the D1 chart as well as your relationship and your partnership and your gains. So let's jump in and see how the Pisces sign in the 12 houses in the Navamsa, what permutations, combinations and what probabilities it is throwing up for all of us. So when the first house of the Navamsa has the Pisces sign, now we have already done how in the Navamsa each of the ascendant we have already done so you can also go and watch that video of mine which was in the playlist and I will also try and give you a link in the description or in the comment section below. However, what is the Pisces sign denoting when it goes into the first house in your Navamsa into your D9 chart. So the first house of the Navamsa is your Swayabala or your self strength. What is the strength that you are carrying in your finest dissemination of your life highest probabilities of your life. So every now and then the Pisces sign being in the first house in the Navamsa will throw up in its most probable moments the Pisces energies for you to be able to be guided by. What is the highest probability of how people see you and how people will react with you, how people will deal with you and how you will be able to use your energies will be seen from the Pisces sign in the Lagna chart. So how people will generally see you, maybe because of your dissemination they may see you as somebody who is very honest very emotional but what this also does Pisces sign in the Lagna in the Navamsa is also makes you a little like a bicycle. Sometimes you are in this mind that should I do this or should I not do this. Especially if something is more creative and it comes from your gut feeling. Mind you it also gives you a certain kind of psychic ability which means you are get to know when something is happening or the gut feeling tells you whether something is right or wrong. So it gives you some intuitive ability to be able to take your decisions. So sometimes because of that intuitive energy or you are not feeling right deep inside you don't want to do something unless you feel right from inside you don't want to do it. So this may sometimes make you a little like a bicycle. People may see you as a little lazy or laid back also. However what it also does this Pisces sign energies in the Lagna chart in the Navam say it makes you very selfless, very idealistic also. But sometimes because of your, your idealistic nature people may see you that you are not very reasonable, you are not very practical or see you as somebody who procrastinates. But because of you being somebody who is very introspective, even sacrificing, this overall gives you very good relations with people because people see you as imaginative, people see, people see you as honest, people also see you as very selfless, people see, also see you as somebody who is very flexible, emotional, always wanting to help and very charitable, always going across the board to be able to help people even at the cost of self-sacrificing. So remember, if the Pisces sign goes into the Lagna 
in your D9 chart, all these qualities will affect the most highest probabilities of your life, specially connected to partnership, specially connected to relationships. So your partner may be seeing you as somebody who is more idealistic and trying to get him or her to do things in a certain manner or you want a partner who is of a certain kind also. You will be very selfless and sacrificing once you find that particular partner. But for a Pisces sign person in the Lagna chart in the D9, it's very difficult to find the most ideal partner that you're looking for. So yeah, many times you feel that you are cutting corners or you are settling for the kind of person that you want or you are compromising a lot. So my suggestion to you, if you have Pisces sign in the Lagna chart is to not overthink about situations of partnership and but at the same time take care of yourself you may be too sacrificing for your own cause now when the Pisces sign goes into the second house of the D9 chart what does it do is that second house is also called as the house of bhoga consumption nutrition what one will attain to their own actions either good or bad so when the Pisces sign goes into the second house in the Navamsa it gives you the highest probability of where the nutrition is coming from and where the nutrition is being spent or who the nutrition is being spent upon, where your income is being spent upon, where your earnings are going. If you have a bank balance, whenever you need to liquidate that bank balance or take the money out and spend on somebody, where that money is going. So the Paisa sign in the second house in the Navamsa makes you somebody who is very honest about your money, about where your uh, revenues are coming from and there is some, nothing to hide for you. Especially with your partner, we will be very open about it. Why? Because the Navamsa chart is also about your partnership, also your relationship. However, what it also does is that it doesn't make you somebody who has this killer instinct. Unless there are some very strong energies in the D1 chart, in the Lagna chart, usually Pisces sign in the second house will make you sometimes too happy and satisfied with what you are getting and that's why you don't push enough. And you don't push push as much as other people in the organization is, is pushing because of which you sometimes get relegated to the background. You don't get the acknowledgement. You don't get the appreciation. So, Pisces sign in the second house means you need to really sometimes blow your trumpet to be heard. It's not good to be always selfless, always sacrificing. Sometimes you become too introspective. No, I didn't deserve this. Maybe because of the, I did this because of this happened. Or you play this victim, I am this victim, nobody takes care of me and all. So you need to be more street smart. You need to be somebody from your learning, pers from your earning perspective, from where you are getting your remuneration, how you are pushing for that salary growth. You need to be more practical, you need to be more street smart. It's not good to be a little idealistic that okay, if I did this, then this should have happened or feeling the victim or feeling that okay, I need to move into another organization. Because sometimes with this placement, sometimes you make too many changes. Assuming that the next organization will be good or the next boss will be good or the next interdepartmental equation will be good. So if your Pisces sign in the second house, the work is cut out for you. It's okay to be selfless. It's also okay to be sacrificing for your team members, for your partner, for your marital partner, for your spouse. However, it's also important to know where your nutrition is coming from, where the money is coming from and being a little street smart. Asking for yourself also. This placement sometimes makes you too giving to others. So sometimes you end up giving too much to family, to your spouse, to your children. You feel, who am I earning for? My spouse, my children. But please keep take care of yourself. Because what happens is many times you feel that you're distributing everything and nothing is left for yourself. So the self time, the self expenses or taking care of yourself sometimes gets relegated to the background. And because you are selfless and sacrificing, others may not be able to see that. that. So if your Pisces sign in the second house in the Navamsa, ensure that you take care of yourself, you're honest also in your communication as you usually are, but also don't be too selfless or be too giving or be too flexible in your relationship, with, in your partnership because giving is okay, but giving too much, maybe you are giving up too much of yourself. Now when the Pisces sign goes into the third house in the Navamsa, this is a very strong placement. However, it has its nicks and knacks. What does it mean? It means the third house is the house of giving, talking, communicating, advising, consulting, guiding, teaching. Also your efforts, where your efforts are going, where you are trying to influence people and how in which manner you are influencing people. Now remember because the Navamsa is the strongest dissemination of the Lagna chart but it gives the highest probabilities. Lagna chart is possibilities, the D9 chart is probability. So it gives you highest probabilities 
or doing certain actions or taking action in a certain manner so the Pisces sign in the third house will give you an ability of how the Pisces sign energies are guiding your relationships your partnerships anybody who you meet on a day-to-day -day basis not only your partner or your life partner Pisces energies will determine how you're communi communicating with the person how you're trying to call to action to the person how you're engaging with the person how you're trying to influence the person so here the Pisces energies are being too honest so third house is also communication you're too honest in your communication sometimes it can make you a little talkative you talk too much you have too much information keep your heart cards close to your chest don't overdo don't give every idea to everybody sometimes I'm not saying do that but keeping some of your plans even hidden from your spouse may not be a bad idea tell the person when certain things are done maybe at especially at work you don't need to say okay I'm working on this project this work project will do this quietly work on the project let the project meet its mark let the project give you that acknowledgement and the growth then come and tell your partner that I was working on this project this is a very good project I got this deal blah 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 whatever. but I'm not saying hide everything give a little information but not too much so what happens is the creativity of the Pisces energy is compromised when you're giving up too much or talking too much about it this is also an intuitive energy sometimes you know what to tell people what not to tell people so you also hold back enough sometimes but many times what happens you hold back too much of your emotional side what you want is held back and you may react in a situation that you did this to me I didn't like this and all that's all okay but what do you want you open and tell people what you want ensure that you also get enough from the relationship enough from the partnership because the d9 chart is more about relationships and partnership you end up becoming too sacrificing too charitable in giving so if the Pisces sign is in the, in the third house don't be a little like a bicycle push hard put in more energy but also be very tactful where the energy is going where you're spending your efforts because then you may get better fruits if not then what will happen is you may end up doing too much work for others Others may riding on your shoulders, on your back and then getting the growth where you may be left behind. Now in the Pisces sign goes into the fourth house of your D9 chart of the Navamsa chart. This is an important energy because Pisces sign has the Moksha energies being the 12th house of the Kalpurush Kundli. So when the Pisces sign goes into the 12th house, it brings you a certain denotation of being more idealistic what you do for the family because fourth house is the family fourth house is also how you protect give nutrition to the family to the domestic household in what manner you are setting up your domestic home your marital home this is not the house which you are born in that is your second house this is the house that you make with your partner so here you get a lot of emotional energy to how I want to build my house there is this idealistic notion in your mind I want my house to be this way I want my house to be that way I want to do this to the house I want that to the house this kind of a home I want so those idealistic dreams are good but what happens is because you're too giving and you're not pushing hard enough you make some compromises to both with whom you're setting up the domestic house the partnership that you're getting into as well as the house so how however hard you try many times you're just not completely satisfied with the home you always feel this should have been done that should have been done this corner should have been done this way this color should have been done or when you do things you feel I didn't do this color or this color didn't come out right this furniture didn't come out right this chair is not right in this corner so you always feel there is something still left because the all your creativity comes at home Pisces sign is also the highest sign of creativity or imagination so a lot of imagination goes into this but a lot of imagination also goes into what kind of a domestic environment you want you are sometimes looking at a more idealistic environment because you are very idealistic in giving you want to be this perfect uh, father or spouse or you know uh, sibling or son so you end up giving too much to the domestic household and if when people complain that you don't do this you end up introspecting and thinking yeah I made this mistake yes I this must be wrong with me you end up doing that and because of that you can't you know continuously keep giving you're too charitable you're too sacrificing even in your domestic life you need to be careful and because either you're too idealistic or suddenly one fine day you get up and say I didn't get this that, that, that you, did, you didn't do this to me and all people feel oh, oh, oh this guy is very unreasonable he's not being practical they feel they are practical they feel you are not practical because you are swinging from one end of the spectrum to the other try and be in the center where being emotional is good talking 
you know being sacrificing all is good but be in the center which means do a balance between how much you are giving how much you are carrying for yourself being idealistic is not bad but being too idealistic how, what kind of a home you should have what kind of a support you should give to your family to your partners good as long as you also taking care of yourself so focus on home focus on domestic matters focus on the assets that you make sometimes spices sign in the fourth house makes you too idealistic about the assets you want to make and you think you need more and more to be able to have a good secure uh, you know livelihood and good secure home and good uh, secure financial security so oh, don't overthink if you continue to work hard and you continue to use your imagination pisces sign will ensure that you have a comfortable household comfortable life now when the pisces sign goes into the fifth house of the navamsa chart of the d9 chart so here yeah, all your creativity and imagination of the pisces sign energies goes into the fifth house which is also the house of creativity imagination artistic denotation because the fifth house is the house of how you are able to express what you like to do what you love to do it is also the house of expressive arts it is also the house of how you express your power your influence your authority and it also comes in with the energy of being the eighth house from the tenth house of change in career in job in karma so a lot of karmic energy is coming into the fifth house because pisces sign energy is going there it is more of the entire moksha energy remember pisces sign is the 12th house in the kal purush kundli so the 12th house sign pisces sign now going into the fifth house means all that moksha energies or giving up comes into the fifth house and pisces sign anyways is the sign of sacrificing is the sign of giving up being too charitable so pisces sign going into the fifth house means sometimes you become too charitable to your kids to your children you end up wanting to give more and more you want to be this idealistic partner so you end up idealistic father in fact or mother you want to give more and more to the children everything is for children focus is on children financial security is for children saving is for children so you need to be able to balance between how much you keep for you or your partner and to the children because the navamsa chart the d9 chart is also the chart of partnerships relationship so the pisces sign going into the fifth house the sign of introspection emotional quotient creativity imagination and fifth house of romance so here you also try to be too idealistic in your romance especially in the starting days you will be this loving and doting partner who wants to do everything for your partner and in that you set up ex wrong expectation the partner feels oh this guy is ideal he is so he or she is so good but when you end up in a long term committed relationship then they see that you are not bringing to the table as much as they thought you will bring you may not have promised but you played this idealistic lover so that they feel that idealistic lover should also be the idealistic husband spouse or partner and they should do more and more and more for for me but what happens is everybody and everybody can do only so much so you always shower so much love set up high expectation without wanting to and the partner feels you are not doing enough for me and then that comes back later on in your relationship also so when pisces sign goes into the fifth house be very careful in your romance who you are getting into a long term committed relationship romance is not bad get into romance get into flings if you want but whenever you are committing ensure that the commitment that you are making is to a partner who you are able to get along well and the partner is also as giving as you nobody can be as giving as a, with a pisces sign in the fifth house the sign of sacrifice being charitable and all however do ask for what you also want and otherwise what will end up you doing you do too much for your romantic partner or your life partner if you get, end up getting married to the person and to the children and sometimes because of this energy of giving up many times you change your jobs also when you just think i can't handle this energy i can't handle this boss i can't handle this pressure so keep a little more sustaining power to think about yourself think about your career think about what you are getting out of the relationship so that you get more out of the fifth house the house of gains house, house of prarabdha so that you are taken better care of now when the sixth house has the pisces sign energies in the navamsa chart in the d9 chart what is the sixth house in the navamsa chart it is the house of the challenges problems behind the back people who are working against you issues problems also and sometimes sickness is also now because the sixth house is the house of high probabilities in the navamsa in the d9 chart so there are higher probability of all these issues coming to you is also higher 
connected to the Pisces sign because Pisces sign is going into the sixth house and the Pisces sign remember has the 12th house energies. So 12th house energies going into the six, sixth house of sicknesses in the D9 chart of higher probabilities which means you will generally people with Pisces sign in the sixth house in the Navamsa will carry some chronic ailment, some niggling challenge here and there and try as you might. If you are put on weight, you have to work doubly hard than others to shed that weight. If you have some niggling pain somewhere, you have to doubly work hard to be able to eradicate that pain or eradicate the challenge. Many times your digestive system may not be the best, may not be the idealistic. Either you are extremes that you digest almost anything, everything you eat or you have to be very picky and choosy otherwise the digestive system takes, goes for a toss. So you end up through not being able to nourish, put right nourishment into your stomach you end up getting challenges. The other thing is people working behind your back. There will always be somebody who is working behind your back who you don't know of, you are not aware of. Even if that person is not maybe in your team working below you where you will may face more challenges, even some intra-departmental, some other person you send a mail and the person will say no this mail is not right, how can this person say this and all. So unnecessarily something or the other whenever you at work something or the other niggling thing will come up every day something will come suddenly something will flare up some mail will come in which makes you very cross and you get very angry you want to send that kind of a mail also so be a little careful how you're communicating with the people who are below you working below you and also mind you the d9 chart is the house of or the sign of, of the chart of relationship partnership and the sixth house is the twelfth house to the seventh house so what happens this energy of giving and sacrificing also comes into your relationship what does this mean the loss of relationship is seen from the sixth house so sometimes you being too pro giving too sacrificing also can result in you ending up being the person who's also victimized in the relationship to such an extent one day you give up you say i just can't be in this relationship i've done too much and you want to move out but being the emotional person it takes you a lot of time to get out of the relationship get out of the mental equation so be very careful what kind of a relationship you are getting if you are Pisces sign in the sixth house because this will stay with you for long the emotional trauma will stay with you for long it will not be easy for you to just move away from the person even if the relationship is no more so if your Pisces sign in the sixth house ensure that the relationship with subordinates with colleagues at work is good so that you have fewer people working behind your back pulling you down secondly work on your relationship with your spouse with your partner or any partnership even a business partnership third take care of your health because this is an important component of how you will, will be affected by maybe even a chronic ailment or something and lastly introspection is fine being more giving is fine but being over emotional about a situation or being a little timid or not asking for enough will be the one which may be counterproductive to your relationship and to your partnership now when the seventh house in the navamsa has the pisces sign or the pisces sign goes into the seventh house in the navamsa this is a very balanced position on the one side which makes you very emotional very giving very honest very selfless very sacrificing in your relationship also but it can also make you a little idealistic you are this romantic types person unless you have different energies in the D1 chart but generally Pisces sign in the 7th house means you are this selfless romantic who wants to do more for the partner shower your love and affection so partner is most important person for you your, all your emotions are for the partner all your love and affection is for the partner that person becomes the center of your attention now but what happens if you don't find the person as giving as sacrificing as imaginative as com compassionate as you obviously you feel you have been shortchanged you have not got the equal side or maybe a balanced uh, treatment from the other side also so now because the d9 chart is the sign is the, is the chart of a uh, higher probability is the higher probability of you being at the end of being taken for a ride emotionally is also high now i'm not saying in any relationship you are every relationship will take you for a ride emotionally but you ending up giving too much and because of which you feeling I've been taken for a ride or I've been short changed in the relationship is high this is ideal if the other partner is also very reciprocative very caring very giving then this is a fantastic placement to have Pisces sign in the seventh house otherwise what happens not only in your marital life 
but in your other partnerships business partnerships or working with team members also you end up giving too much sometimes you're too emotional so you want to help you want to support you want to care so you end up giving too much because the Pisces sign energies is a sign of sacrificing and charitable so being too charitable in almost every team every relationship or every team member also that who works closely work, working with you you want to stand up for them support them take care of them work for them do something more for them you mean at work so if your Pisces sign energy is in the seventh house in the announcer so be a little more careful of how you're balancing between what you need in the relationship what you need in the partnership also unless your partner is as giving as you you may always have this feeling that you're not being given enough other partners not doing enough for you in the relationship so be really careful it's also good to talk and be open but this will also give you an energy of being very intuitive so many times if the partner is up to something before that thing happens or the partner is lying you get this okay my partner is hiding something from me keeping something from me you will also get that same thing you get from your team members also so use the intuitive energy to your advantage rather than being too sacrificing and too giving now when the Pisces sign goes into the eighth house in your Navamsa remember the Navamsa is the house of the chart of higher probability so when a sign goes into that a certain house in the Navamsa the greater probability of the sign energies playing upon the areas of the house will be very very high will be very strong the Pisces sign going into the eighth house Pisces sign giving being charitable emotional being somebody who's very introspective so Pisces sign in the eighth house may bring up too many obstacles in your path too many challenges in your path especially on the emotional side these are not too many challenges on the financial side or materialistic side what happens is this you may, this is a placement where you're not too much worried about highest materialistic you, i want that rolls royce i want the best you want a decent house you want a decent car you want decent um, you know all things in the house and all are comfortable you don't want an ultra luxurious house um, or a lifestyle some of you may have if your placements are different in the lagna chart but generally with Pisces sign in the eighth house you are not expecting too much but still what happens is you may get some comforts basic comforts or maybe even more but this may also make you somebody who has to run into emotional challenges every now and then because or the emotional side is getting affected so either at work somebody is not helping you so emotionally you get affected the partner is not doing enough for you emotionally you get affected eighth house in-laws many times you may not get as much emotional support from your in-laws they may like you they may also feel you're a good person whatever but there will also be some of this tug of war energy with your in-laws every now and then you're not most comfortable most happy most comfortable around them the other thing is shared partnerships where you're sharing assets so be a little careful if you have Pisces sign in the 8th house and the Navamsa if you're sharing resources on a legal paper with your partner try and keep your finances at least some of your finances separate from your partner keep it into a separate account put it into a separate investment don't put everything into one um, basket that everything that you have earning is also in a joint holding between you and your partner so keep that uh, thing aside because one of the reasons i am saying is not that you, you should not trust your partner of course you should trust your partner but also you should keep something for, for yourself aside but it is the pisces sign energy which goes into the eighth house so sudden challenges come up and they may erode the assets energy that is uh, calling upon or working upon joint assets so it's always better to keep some money away rather than to put everything in there the other thing is eighth house sudden obstacle challenges are coming up and they emotionally drain you and these challenges usually come from family or the closest people who are to you, your friends or your spouse or your children or even siblings so on the emotional side those upheavals every now and then come change will come to you and usually at least one emotional change or emotional transformation you have to go through in your life either because of a loss of a uh, in you know relative or a loss of a relationship or you going through ups and downs in the relationship and then you coming up on an FA penny that I need changes I need to change that and only after after that emotional transformation then things are settled so if your Pisces sign in the eighth house be a little careful of how you're handling obstacles how you're handling emotional quotient because then you may not be able to keep yourself 
uh, more balance and you may end up giving too much even on the emotional side. Now when the Pisces sign energies go into the ninth house of the Navamsa chart, the Navamsa chart is the chart of higher probabilities, higher probability of events happening, of things happening. So when the Pisces sign energies goes into the ninth house, ninth house of higher energies, higher qualification, many times you will find that the learning which comes to you is through how you are dealing with people. People become your biggest teachers either through your equation with them or learning from them through school or college or having somebody mentor. This is a good placement having one mentor who you can always go to. One person at least you should have who you completely trust who is a go-to go person for you who you can depend upon for wise advice. So learning from that experience is important and the zodiac forces you to learn from that experience. So situations come upon in your life because of which you have to go through these emotional ups and downs and through the situation learning, the experiential learning, then you become a wiser person. You get wiser how to deal with your partnerships. Remember the Navamsa chart is a chart of partnerships, your ability to deal with others on a day to day basis. So something will happen or some equations will happen, some situations will happen because of which then you mature more and through these situations you learn. And a lot of your earning is also connected to this experiential ups and downs of upheavals that you go through. And because it is the Pisces sign energies, sometimes you become too idealistic of how you want to learn or you want to take up that course because you want to change this world and all. This also gives you very honest and open relation, relationship with your teachers and it also gives you access sometimes to even more spiritual teachers. You also want to learn spiritually, you also want to know about yourself spiritually, you want to also have a spiritual elevation. So. If you are, have the Pisces sign energies in the ninth house, education will be very important for you. Not only the college or the uh, materialistic education that you have an engineering degree or some IT course, but also the spiritual learning, the spiritual elevation, the spiritual higher knowledge is also important for you. So if your Pisces sign is in the ninth house, use that obviously to have a better equation to learn from situation in life from your teachers but the biggest learning will come from your partnership from your relationships. Now if the Pisces sign goes into the 10th house in your Navamsa chart in the D9 chart. The Navamsa chart is the chart of higher probabilities events having higher probability of that to happen. 10th house is the house of your karma, your wealth, your standing in society, how you are looked at in your society through what is your standing at work. If you are somebody who has a very good position in a good company, then people see you as with more respect. However, Pisces sign energy goes into the 10th house, means there is a lot of upheavals, ups and downs. This also makes you too selfless at work, too sacrificing at work. So usually with Pisces sign going into the 10th house, in the D9 chart, in the Navamsa chart means you end up giving too much at work, too much contribution. And this gives you this emotional nature where you can't say no. Generally your bosses give you extra work, some work, some project you will be involved in suddenly comes upon you, do this, do this, do this, you end up doing that. And there is hardly any acknowledgement which is coming by for you, there is hardly any appreciation is coming by. You end up giving more with the Pisces sign going into the 10th house. So this is a sign from the zodiac cut out for you that ask for more, don't be too impractical or be too idealistic and sometimes you end up also thinking about yourself, say if the boss doesn't give you a promotion and says, yeah, yeah, we were not able to promote you because of this, 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 some reason bosses will give you, some shitty reason they will give you. They don't care about the reason. It may be good, it may be right, it may it, it may not be right. But you end up too much procrastinating, ah, but when did I do this, when did I say this, but I did this project, it was well done, uh, it was appreciated well. So you may feel that you are doing a good job, but you, and you may be true, but many times you may be short -changed by others. So if your Pisces sign in the 10th house and the Navamsa, don't be too giving at work. Don't be too giving in your karma which means you feel good karma always comes back so I have to keep doing good things. Yes, please keep doing good things but don't uh, 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 hope that somebody will come back and return the favor. It may come back to you in some manner which you don't even know but you will not be able to see it openly. So do the good things for others. Be a little selfless that is always good but also ensure in your karma on your day to day actions and, and at work you also be more protective of yourself, ask for the growth, ask for the corner office, ask for better roles also if you feel you are doing enough. Now if the Pisces sign goes into the 11th house in your D9 chart, in your Navamsa chart, the Navamsa chart is the chart of 
or the horoscope of higher probabilities which are happening in your life mind you so in the Pisces sign is going into the 11th house on a societal connect societal contribution societal causes societal network connections friendships equations here the Pisces sign energies of being to giving to selfless to idealistic will also play how you are with with friends usually what happens you start off with maybe four five six ten friends but most of the time you're short change or you don't find equation going well with them so you end up with just one or two very rarely you will have more than three friends who you can call close friends or your 4 a.m friends for example and out of those friends also you may not be in touch with them regularly once in a blue moon in three months four months five months six months you may reach out and talk to them ask them you know meet with them socially and all so this ends up you also not being or having access to very good friends close friends on a day-to-day -day basis you may have people who you call friends the Facebook friends but they may not be really uh, people who you can depend upon and here also you are a little lazy in when wanting to make relations or equations you are somebody who is outgoing bubbly effort of some energy when you are with friends or you are on company so you want to be social and you want to have a good time and all however you don't like those kind of environment all the time you want to have your own space you want to have that alone time because Pisces sign 12th house solitary energies so number of people with Pisces in the 11th house you'll find them more introvertish rather than extro extrovertish which means that you like more of your me time self time rather than indulge with others and this problem comes in your relationship also because the Navamsa is the house of or the chart of relationship partnerships many times you want your space your own time your partner may not, not may not be so giving that always allows you your time so sometimes this is also the partner feel you don't give me time you don't give me enough attention you don't love me enough you don't praise me enough you don't take care of me as much as you used to do for me earlier this may also come in and your social life usually goes through ups and downs more often than not sometimes you may be in that phase when friends are there you're moving with friends social life and then suddenly dumb everything falls down where you then for the next two three months no social life nothing you're working 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 so if your Pisces sign energy is in the 11th house also know that you also need to get back from your equations from your friends from society it's not always good to give many times people with Pisces sign in the 11th house also believe in some societal cause and do a lot for the societal cause or you have this feeling or this emotion that I need to do something about some that cause and you may not be finding time however it's always important that you take care of yourself you also are not too selfless you're not too giving sign of Pisces is about that not too idealistic in your friend circle in your emotional side and also try to be a better friend to your partner rather than just being somebody who's giving in the relationship being a partner or a husband or wife alone be a better friend now when the Pisces sign energies go into the 12th house in the Navamsa chart in the D9 chart remember the Navamsa chart is the higher chart of probabilities the higher probability of an event happening is stronger so Pisces sign energy going into the 12th house which is makes your chart in the D9 chart the Kalpurush Kundi Aries Ascendant Mesh Rashi which means that here you are looking at your partnership or how you deal with people to then elevate you spiritually it's not that you think about it every day and out. I have to elevate myself spiritually this is not that energy deep down your conscience your soul wants a higher elevation through having a better equation with people on a day-to-day -day basis because the DNA chart is about people is about partnership is also about your marital partner so you want a better equation emotional equation with your partner or with the people who you work with and you think that if I give too much, if I am very charitable, if I am more helpful, I am more caring, I am more supportive, I will also get the help from them. But what the zodiac is telling you, with Pisces sign in the 12th house, you will get very less back from your partner, from your friends, your team members. Do more for others, but the spiritually you will be gaining brownie points and spiritual elevation may come stronger to you and the zodiac will ensure that. But in the world, in your current innings, very rarely will you get the same reciprocation from your partner of your team member so yeah being too idealistic and giving too much and being too emotional in your relationship being too emotional in your friendship is not good and another thing many times you give money you loan money it doesn't come back to you either you're somebody who doesn't believe in loaning money you may want to help people in some way and if at all your help very rarely you will get the money back and in the same manner or in the same 
you know, if you're giving somebody ten thousand dollars, all the ten thousand will not come at one go. You may get bits and bits and pieces, or you may not even get uh, that money back. So this is certainly a sign, paisa sign in the twelfth house of being giving, doing more for others. But this is also a sign which makes you work with foreign foreign uh, consultants, foreign companies, foreigners, or a foreign organization, or going to foreign lands also. However, the first two years will always be full of challenge. Either in your relationship, either in your work, when you are the Pisces sign in the twelfth house. So, friends, now that we have discussed how the Pisces sign going into the twelfth house in the Navamsa will throw up different permutations, different combinations for you. Do see what planets are there in which houses in the Pisces sign in your Navamsa, what yogas or doshas it makes, and what kind of permutations and combinations it is giving you, with giving you the highest probability of certain things happening. So, friend, like this video, share this video, and if you're looking for a personal consultation from me, please reach out to me. The link is given below. Until some other time, with some other video, this is your friend astrologer and guide. I'm signing off. Ciao.